First off, congratulations on your award today. Uh, keys to the city. How many other keys to the city have you garnered over the years? Not many, but when it happens, you know, I, I, I take note. Mm -hmm. uh, this one is in recognition of the, the Western storytelling that you have, uh, you know, done so much of in your career. What, what is it about these kinds of stories of, of the Old West uh, or even the New West yeah. that have appealed to you so much? Well, I think, you know, it's not a land in, in Disneyland. Frontierland. It was a it was a, a it was a choice that people left what they had to a wide open space with the promise that if they were tough enough, mean enough, resourceful enough, they could hold on to something. And the reality was that there was a people existing there um, it had established an equilibrium for thousands of years, and there was this disruption, and it was cataclysmic. It was it was um, a disaster. But inside it, there's these heroic stories, there's these resourceful stories, there's these awful stories. There's so much drama in the West, and if you can, if you can get beneath the story and get to the humanity of it, then a Western starts to make sense. If it's just a white hat and a black hat, it doesn't make as much sense. If it's people just like you and I, but operating 150 years ago in what was a very difficult situation, that, there's a lot of drama in that. You don't need any sirens. You don't need anything. Just the silence could scare you. But I think even now when we talk about the New West as well and, and what we saw with Yellowstone and Montana and just this kind of like resurgence of those kinds of stories, it feels like there's something that's in our kind of DNA collectively. Well, looking kinds. at a mountain or a river that's never stopped we, and, and it's untainted, we start to understand that, you know, America 300 years ago, 200 years ago, 150 years ago, it was the Garden of Eden. Mm -hmm. Literally, you had Europe, the rest of it was so much settled, buildings. There was nothing in America. The people lived so lightly on the land, and the animals seemed to go on forever, and the rivers were filled, and our oceans. America was the Garden of Eden. And so when you look at some of these places and realize they still exist, when you watch Yellowstone, when you see Horizon, and you see these places to understand that this beauty is something to be protected on some level. And those mountains aren't going anywhere. We are. So it's what, what do we do while we're alive to make sure that the next 100 years people are able to look at that and be in awe of it. You mentioned Horizon. It feels like in a lot of ways you have just kind of pushed the chips in to tell this kind of story. And I know people are really excited to hear it. Do you get nervous when you are getting ready for audiences to see a piece like this? Or, you know, what's that feeling? I've let it go because, you know, I have... I, you can tell when you put everything into a movie, and I have. This has been a journey for me, and I, w I wasn't able to get everything I want, but I got everything I absolutely needed, and, it, and I've got the story that I wish somebody would have made for me. Instead, I've turned around and made it for the same 9-year-old, 10-year-old father, Father's Day, go with your son, go with your daughters. You know, you might see that it's an R, but I think when you watch the movie, I don't know if you've seen it or not, but I think when you see the movie, you'll go, wait a second, I, I think the kids should see this because this w was their ancestors moving across. And that's the hope that this, uh, this movie catches that. And then two will start to make sense and three and four. So it is a, it's an American journey. I made it for people. Um, I ended up having to you know, finance it. So if, if, it, if, if it's not good, it's my fault. Um, and if it is good, you're, you're going to know that every decision was made with the audience. I mean, I'm looking right past you and it's dark. And that's how we see movies. We're by ourselves in the dark. And I realize that. That's why all the details, everything that you're going to see became important to me. Every line. I mean, if it's half as good as a trailer, we're in for a great ride. What's that? If it's half as good as a trailer, we're in for something special. Cause well, I, I you know, it, 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 it's, you know, some movies dazzle us with trailers, and then they don't live up to what they are. This is a, this is a movie where I, I think we have a very good trailer, but our story is, is the star of the movie, where it goes, and the people you start to identify with, and most specifically are women. You know, in making this Western, I, it was so strange that they began to dominate the Western. Mm -hmm. And I think it's appropriate because the West doesn't happen unless women are there. It doesn't go on. Mm -hmm. We don't go on. And women are important in our story. So take your daughters, look what your great-great-grandmothers went through, and uh, take your sons and look what your grandfathers went through. And, um, you know, 
I, I wish I was seeing it for the first time. You get to see one on the 28th, and six weeks later you get to see one on the, the 16th. So uh, I'm out pounding, trying to make the third one. I love my relationship with movie audiences. This is kind of my, um, this is what I thought might be fun to see. You mentioned earlier being a Lakers fan. You guys have been through title runs before. We're in the middle of one here in North Texas with the Mavericks. Uh, I feel like you've got a lot of the country that is rooting for the Mavericks and a lot of the country that's rooting against the Celtics. <laughs> yeah, well. Where, where are you falling on this well, one? Well, the, the Celtics beat our brains, and, you know, they're a, really a tough franchise. I watched Jerry West and, and all the, from the 60s sitting in the parking lot. They didn't have 80 channels just having to listen to the radio right at the end, and Don Nelson makes his shot, and Bailey Howe makes his shot. And once again, the Celtics win. They are not letting you up right now, but the coolest thing about sports is athletes don't care. They decide. What happens next, the, the Mavericks decide. They're playing a really great franchise, a really great team, but the Mavericks are a great team, and sports are cruel. It's cruel to watch your team you know, maybe go down. But th this, is a, this is a moment where the Mavericks decide at this moment, and it doesn't matter what any talking heads say about them. They go out there, and it's five on five. It's the perfect five on five. And you have, you know, you have a, a, a generational player in Donick, and, and, I mean, you have a great team. Um, uh, and... Um, so I love it, you know, it's, 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 it's easy to root for someone and hard to root against someone in the last final game because there's people that have broken their ass to get there. And, um, and uh, grown men are going to be probably some tears, but that's what makes sports great. But the Mavericks get to decide, sports decide what's going to happen, not us. Mavs and six? What's that? <laughs> Mavs and six? Look, what kind of talk is that? I'm, I'm, just, I'm, I'm hoping. I'm like putting it in the world, man. No, no, no. I'm t don't, it's, it's, you know, it's like the movie. you got to watch it. Well, you know, can't predict what's going to happen in Horizon. You go see it. What we get to do is be entertained by men playing a, chi a boy's game, mm -hmm. a, a kid's game, at the highest level. Every trick these guys learned when they were little is coming to bear right now. Every trick they've learned as a rookie against grown men pros, it's coming to bear right now. And so that's what I can watch, is the drama of this. Here's for a dramatic series. Hey, thank you for your time. I know you're very busy. I appreciate Thanks. it.